Hello everybody! Today we are taking a quick look at Joker Folie Adieu, directed by Todd Phillips and starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. After the events of the first Joker movie, Arthur Fleck is in Arkham State Hospital waiting trial for the many murders he committed. While he is in Arkham, he meets a patient named Harleen Quinzel, aka Harley Quinn, who is somewhat obsessed with Joker and he ends up falling in love with her. His lawyer, played by Katherine Keener, is trying to put together an insanity defense, claiming Joker suffers from disassociative identity disorder, and it was the Joker personality that was responsible for the murders and not Arthur Fleck himself. But apparently mounting an insanity defense is not going to be easy, and for the life of me, I do not understand why that is. If he's not insane, why is he in Arkham? That is not where they put the normal people. But in any case, Harley wants Arthur to ignore his lawyer's advice and embrace that darker side of himself and admit that he truly is the Joker. Also, it's a jukebox musical. For some reason. As you know, if you've been following my channel for a while, I was not really a fan of the first movie. I didn't hate it, but I found it all to be kind of pointless. It seemed like the movie was trying to say something, but hell if I know what that something was and very little of it felt like it actually came from the Batman universe. Arthur Fleck is pretty much Joker in name only. Credit where it's due, Joaquin Phoenix acted his ass off and deserved that Oscar, but that's about the only thing the movie had going for it. As for Folie Adieu, I'm still kinda trying to process it, but I do have some of the same feelings. Once again, Phoenix is phenomenal. He really threw himself into this role. And based on his Oscar acceptance speech for the first movie, I'm not entirely sure he ever actually came out of it. In any case, he is giving this movie so much more than it deserves, and he's a damn good singer too. But again, this does not feel like the Joker from the Batman universe. It's Joker in name only. And oddly enough, I don't want to give too much away here, but based on what happens at the end of the movie, I think the movie actually agrees with that point. I was a little surprised by that, because I don't think that's what the first movie was trying to say. That almost feels like a retcon. And I have similar feelings about Lady Gaga. Of course, she's a very good actress, as anyone who saw A Star Is Born can attest. Obviously, she can sing, we know that. But even though she is giving it her all in Folie Adieu, she is Harley Quinn in name only. There is almost no connection between this character and the character from the Batman universe. And I wasn't really clear on exactly what her motivation was supposed to be. I understand that she's got some weird obsession with the Joker, and not so much with Arthur Fleck, which is why she wants him to embrace his Joker personality, but... Then what? Like, what, what exactly is her end game here? Arthur submits and becomes the Joker. What's step two? I have no idea what step two is supposed to be, and I don't think Todd Phillips does either. I also want to call attention to Lee Gill, who reprises his role as Gary Puddles. He's only in one scene where he takes the stand during Joker's trial, and it is a heart-wrenching performance. The whole time he just looks so timid and so sad, and honestly, he got more of an emotional response out of me in those five minutes than anyone else in the movie did for the rest of the two hours and change. In fact, that entire scene was pretty much the highlight of the movie. At this point, based on Harley's advice, Arthur has dismissed his lawyer and decided to represent himself in full Joker attire and makeup, which the judge reluctantly finds is not illegal, so he can't actually stop him from doing that. I'm pretty sure that would not be true in the real world, but in Gotham, who knows? And for no reason whatsoever, in addition to the Joker attire, he adopts a southern drawl. And I love that because this is the one scene where he actually does feel like the Joker, because that is exactly what the Joker would do. He is a psychopathic killer, but he is also a clown. Joker is a showman, and he absolutely would go full southern lawyer just to get a rise out of people. Yana, I may be a simple homicidal maniac, I do not have a law degree, but one thing I do know is this witness is hiding something. And yes, this movie is a jukebox musical. Don't expect much in the way of original songs. I believe there was one original song written by Lady Gaga. I 
don't recall if it was actually in the movie. And I'm not sure they had much of a plan when they decided to make it a jukebox musical. The musical choices feel very haphazard. As you may have gathered from the trailer, there are some musical numbers that are dream sequences and take place entirely in Arthur's head. There are other musical numbers that take place in the real world. Sometimes the music fits what's going on in the scene. Other times it seems like a completely random choice. I'm not sure what Phillips was really trying to do here, and honestly, that's true for the entire movie. I believe he said in an interview with Variety that he and Joaquin Phoenix were frequently doing rewrites even while they were filming, and I believe it. There's very little in the way of a coherent vision. It's all over the place. About the only consistent message is prison guards are dicks. So I'm not really sure what my final thoughts are on this movie, because I am still kind of in a state of, what the fuck did I just watch? It's not a good movie, but I'm not entirely certain it's a bad movie either. Uh, I can honestly say, much like the first movie, I didn't hate it. Honestly, right now I'm too confused to hate it. It's definitely a fascinating movie for good and bad reasons. I mean, they swung for the fences with this one, and I can respect that, but they may have hit a foul ball. I'm not really sure I can recommend this one, to be honest with you. If you were a fan of the first movie, you're probably not going to like this one because they took it in such a different direction. And if you didn't like the first movie, I don't think they made enough improvements that this one is going to be for you either. If you're at all curious, I say wait for it to hit streaming. And that's all I have to say about Joker Folia Du. Till next time, take care.